Hi, I'm Laura Brody, and we're interviewing the artists of opulent mobility. Uh, for description purposes, I am a middle-aged white woman in with brown hair in front of a very full bookshelf, and I'm living on Tongva land. Hi, I am Priya Ray. I am a brown-skinned woman with dark brown hair. I'm wearing a black shirt that says Moray Scar, my friend's band, and it's in like a, I don't know what shade of blue this would be, but I'm, I'm going to say aqua, but it's a little darker than aqua, so. I don't know. It it's it's perfectly lovely blue. Sky? Yeah. Maybe sky blue. Yeah, it's a sure. it's pretty blue. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You were telling me right before we went on that you weren't sure you remembered. Do you think somebody just told you about opulent mobility online? I think someone emailed me like someone saw it and you know, I'm disabled and I'm an artist, so they were like, "Oh, this thing is happening." And I was like, <laughs> "Oh, okay. I'll I'm an artist. I'm disabled. I'll enter, you know, I'll enter it and see what happens. Sounds great. Yeah. What kind of art have you been doing for a long time? You, your work that you're sharing with us is photography, but, um, yeah, my main medium is photography and I love photography. Like I love it. I love photographing, but you know, as a disabled person, like I always, okay, so I'm going to say I, I actually had a spinal cord injury about 25 years ago. Hmm. So, and even though my mother was disabled with rheumatoid arthritis, I never, I was always kind of feared that that I would get rheumatoid arthritis. So mm -hmm. that was always like a fear in the back of my head. But instead, what happened is I fell and had a spinal cord injury. So I became disabled and I just never imagined that I would become disabled. So I always like thought I'm just going to be an artist and I'll get a job doing whatever. And I was always able to get, you know, jobs doing different things, doing preparator work, uh, working at a coffee shop or, or, you know, just different things. So that was kind of my plan. But then when I became disabled, I couldn't get a job and I was mm -hmm. like, my God, am I going to have to make money from art? And so, so that's like what I've been trying to do. <laughs> it's so hard, but yeah, photography is the medium I love. I love it. Um, but I also draw and lately what I have really, maybe it had to be before the pandemic. So maybe it was about four years ago. A friend of mine showed me this app called procreate mm. um and i love it because it's like it's i just love it because it's accessible and you can you know recreate oils and watercolors and all this and i didn't have a main medium that i'd like to draw or paint in i just did it for fun type of thing so i was just like oh this is cool i could use any medium I want digitally and, you know, make these things. So that's kind of what I've been doing is in that world. And then I just print it out on photographic prints, which always look great. Yeah. And what I've been starting lately, I got a, I got a gig doing accessibility consulting mm. for a clay studio here in exchange for clay lessons. So that's really fun. And I've been really exploring clay which is blowing my mind because there's so many different things you can do with it so it's just like every day I'm like oh my you know it's just really a combination of using your hands making things and then decorating and glazing and all these different things you can do so I'm really excited about like learning this new medium of clay that's so cool what a great exchange that you have too I know it's really awesome. So, so yeah, I'm always like, like yesterday I was talking to, I was there and I was telling this woman, it's like this area, <laughs> it's like the air walkway from where the clay studio is to where mm. the glazing part is. And it's very narrow. My wheelchair fits, but they have a bunch of brooms, <laughs> dustpan stuffing. And I always knock them over with my wheelchair. And I was telling the woman, I was like, I know I'm not the only person that knocks this over because it's yeah. just not, you know, yeah. it's not accessible for anyone really. So like, so maybe we might want to move that. I don't know. I, you know, I've been writing the manager about different accessibility things. 
which I didn't include the broomsticks and stuff. And I was like, I should write him about that. But he just had a baby, so I'm going to wait. And yeah, okay. Give him a month <laughs> to get used to yeah. um, being tired every day. <laughs> yeah, probably. There's that. Yes. Yeah, you were telling me there's another organization about cripping up art? Well, cripping art. So I have a nonprofit called DIY Abled. And what it is, is my... I my our mission is to educate people about disability and accessibility because when I became disabled you know I was told about the ADA which I to be quite honest I didn't really wasn't really aware of the law because yeah. I wasn't disabled and my mom was disabled so she did use the accessible parking but I didn't realize that hmm. had happened because of the ADA and stuff like that. So huh. it just like, it was something, I don't know. My parents, my parents were immigrants from India. So, you know, hmm. we didn't talk about the world from the perspective of disability type of thing. And, you know, she had a disease that was, you know, got worse as she got hmm. older, but, um, you know, but she did a lot of things and we just never talked about her right. So it wasn't really until I became disabled and, you know, because my mom didn't use a wheelchair. She, she could walk with a cane so she could really get in most places. Like if there was like a huge staircase with, you know, she could get up it, but you know, someone would have to spot her to make sure she didn't fall down the stairs, mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. But um, when I had the wheelchair, it was like a much bigger obstacle for me to get in places. So then I started speaking out about independence and how society needs to support that. And that's what the ADA is for. And so then it was great because my mom, I think like we never also never really discussed it. But one day yeah. she, she was talking to me on the phone and she, you know, she's an Indian woman. So like, you know, Indian women have, they get together and have friends and stuff like that. So they, they started doing, they, I guess they had like a weekly or not a weekly, like a, you know, a monthly dinner where the women got together and, you know, mm -hmm. got up and talked, ate food, talked about clothes, whatever they did. And um, my mom said, yeah, there's this woman and she had, you know, sprained her ankle or broke her foot or something and got a temporary accessible parking placard and she didn't really need it anymore and she still had it and you know not posting all this stuff in social media and I don't really think like oh my mom's friends are seeing I don't think about who's seeing it really and my mom's like and one of my friends said to her why are you using that it's like you're not you're not disabled anymore you're healed why are you still using that and my mom's name is, I'm going to say it how they said it, Kolani, but it's Kalyani, if you look mm -hmm. at it in English. And the Kolani's daughter talks about disability. And that, that spot is for disabled people. And you are not disabled. You shouldn't be using that. And like my, my, told, my mom told me that. But I think she was kind of proud, like that mm -hmm. my mom wasn't saying it. Someone else was saying it, saying Priya, you, her daughter was online talking about disabled people's rights and you shouldn't be using that. And I was like, oh no. I was like, what happened? Did they sit at the same table? She goes, oh no, she sat at a different table. She was like, so I paused this like social, it's like a little bit of a social, which I always thought was funny because I always pushed back so hard against that kind of, you know, like, no. women gathering and gossiping and wearing clothes and I was just always growing up as an American I I don't know I guess I just was like that's I don't like that mom and so mm. that was kind of something my mom and I kind of thought about growing up that so it's so interesting how disability kind of brought that as a full circle for my mother and me and so yeah so I always tell people disability is what bought me and my mother really because we had nothing else in common I didn't really like to dress up and I was a punk rocker growing up you know so I was like yeah. into weird things and she was an Indian woman who liked to wear jewelry and saris and you know all that kind you know so yeah. So I didn't fit into what she had imagined her daughter was going to be. And so, yeah, disability was what in the end, you know, where we found common ground. So 
I just... That's kind of neat though, honestly. That's yeah, a neat really way great. to do it. Yeah. Do you mind if I share one of your pictures and you can tell us about what that is? This is from the Completely Tilted Back series. Love that photograph. That's one of my favorite from these series. Yes. I love it. It's just so striking, but I'd love your story for about it. Okay. So yeah. So I suffer from chronic pain, which is, um, and I don't want to say I suffer. I, no, I do suffer. It is a suffering thing, but I deal with it. Um, and what I have because of a spinal injury and nerve damage, I deal with neuropathy and spasticity. So mm. one of the things the doctor suggested was that I get a power wheelchair that tilted back that would mm. relieve the pressure off of my sitting bones. Yeah. So when I was out, I could just like tilt back and get a little relief from the sitting position when I'm out. So of course, when I started using that chair, I just, you know, all of a sudden I saw, not that I never looked up, but then I was yeah. uh, in this position of looking up because I was trying to get relief from my pain and I would see things. I'm like, oh, this is really cool. I'm going to photograph this. So um, I'm, I'm going to be very transparent about what this is. This is the courthouse in Asheville, and this is what it looked like. And I, before my pain, I do you know, I take use cannabis for my pain and it was, it's not legal in North Carolina. And so mm -hmm. I'm in a band and we were going to, we were playing a show in, I think it was a place called Fairmont, North Carolina. It was like out kind of, it was outside of Asheville where I live and it seemed rural. I don't know. I, I'm not from there, but it was like this, you know, like definitely houses with bigger pieces of land, like, mm you know, more separate from each other. So I don't know if it's exactly rural, but it was like a place where people had houses with a lot of, you know, had the yard, the big yard and nature and all that stuff. So I was just like, I have to medicate. Um, you know, we got lost. And the minute we turned onto the street, a police person pulled us over and I was like, oh my God, are we being pulled over by the police? And he was like, yes, get, mm -hmm. get rid of your medication. And I was just like, oh no. So I was just hiding everything and the policeman pulled us over and was like, oh yeah, you know. So I just was like, yeah, look, I have pain. This is the only thing that helps me. This is what I use. And he goes, I understand. But, you know, unfortunately, in the state of North Carolina, it is not legal to use this for pain. So he didn't, he wasn't a jerk. He didn't take us to jail and stuff like that. He just kind of wrote me a ticket. So then I ended up going to court and I went to court and this is what I saw <laughs> completely tilted back. And I was like, oh my God, this looks like a spaceship in here. So I just took this picture because I knew it was going to be amazing. I just was like, oh my God, I'm going to take this photograph completely tilted back. And so that's what that is. That's the Asheville courthouse. And that and, is quite a story. Yeah, just... And my friend who is a lawyer, you know, like represented me for free basically. And Oh. And so while I was sitting there, everybody got excused because it was all these, it was like mostly like teenagers in a park smoking pot, getting busted. But then the, the judge was like, and it was like one person after another, the judge was like, okay, you have to do community service for this many hours. You have to do this. So I, you know, we, it was like the judge took a break. So I would talk to my lawyer and I was like, and my friend, and I was like, what am I going to do? Because I feel like he's going to excuse me, but he's going to tell me I have to do community service. So how am I going to do community service? I'm in a wheelchair. I can't really do that. And he's like, oh yeah. Okay. He's like, let me talk to the prosecutor. So he told the prosecutor, like, look, she uses this for pain. It's, she's not like teenagers partying in the park. She just uses it for pain. She happened to be in the car that day. So she's like, well, she, will she not ever use it? And he's like, no, I mean, she uses it for pain. She will be using it again. So the prosecutor was like, okay, look, this is what we'll do. We'll excuse her. And if she can pay like $200, $200 oh. and do community service somewhere, 
you know, and they can sign off on this paper. So, oh no, I didn't have to pay $200. I'm sorry. I didn't actually have to pay any money, which was like the thing I was very felt victorious about. But um, they were like, if she could do 20 hours of community service somewhere, that's fine. And at the time I was volunteering for Disability Partners, which is the Center for Independent Living. Okay. In so I talked to the head of the Center for Independent Living at that time and told her what had happened and was like, can I just, whatever I do for you, can I use that as my community service? And she said, yeah, that's fine. So so that is the 20 hours of community service I served at the Center for the Independent Living. <laughs> so, so it's a victorious disability story. <laughs> it's ridiculous that this these are the hoops you're having to jump through, so yeah, to yeah. speak. Yeah, yeah. But um. I'm I'm glad it turned out well in the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It was it was and in the end it was like maybe I kind of think when I see that photograph, I was like, maybe all of that happened with so I could take that amazing photograph. Just so you can take that picture. Yeah. It's all for that purpose. I, I would have never gone to the courthouse ever. Yeah. If, unless I had to. So. so now you had to, and now you have that picture. Which yeah, is really a stunning. People, a lot of people, uh, when I just sell prints, that's the print they buy. Yeah, and then one of my closest friends bought it, and I was like, "Okay, guess where this is?" And she's like, "I don't know." And I was like, <laughs> it's the actual city courthouse for when I got busted because she's a musician. I was like, "When I got busted to go play that show in Fairmont," she's like, "Oh my god, that's amazing!" So, so yeah, it was great. <laughs> well, can. Congratulations, I guess. I mean, were you able to go and do the show? Oh, yeah, yeah. And it was All right. my partner was like, maybe we should not go. I was like, are you kidding me? It's like if we ever needed to release our our frustration, like this is the way to do it. We're going to play that show. And the show was really inaccessible too. It was like, mm. it was like, first of all, it was dark and it was like if the house was far back and there wasn't really like a sidewalk up there. So they, they were like pushing with the help of my partner, like these young musician kids were like pushing in the dark over these branches to get to. So even getting into the house was great. was like, was insane, but it was really great because our drummer was texting me like where are you guys and I had told them what happened and I was like I'll text you when we're on our way so it was just like the band kind of just came together and we set everything up so we could play and it was a really amazing show it was like one of our best shows in my mind anyway <laughs> oh, like, I don't know did you mind. get it recorded I don't, we didn't get it recorded but the, nah. the, but the crowd was just really into what we were doing so it just was like a really great moment for the band like playing and the crowd like I think there's an energy you have when you play music with the crowd that sync gets gets is really wonderful to have yeah. so if you can tell people first off how do they find you it's DIY abled yeah DIY abled um I have an Instagram and I have a website and I have, I have, I'm on all the things, the Facebook and the TikTok, but I use Instagram mostly and I do make art, but I'm so obsessed with like pointing out to people how they need to include disabled people that I always forget to sell my art. And It'll happen. You can do both. You there. can do both. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm trying You'll to figure it out. out. I'm trying to figure out what day of the week should I post about my art and stuff. So yeah, so that's I'm fair. figuring it out. But right now, currently, just because I've gotten so busy with other things, um, I do one thing on my social media, which is called Tuesday Thoughts. And it's just like things I think about. It's a minute long. It's made for reels. And your band. Oh, well, my is band. Okay. So my band is spelled creamy with a K, electric with an L. Santa with an S and we do have a website which is creamy.org and uh, we have an Instagram and we have a Facebook but we're mostly 
most of the stuff we post is on Instagram and gets shared on Facebook. Okay. So. so find all things Priya on Instagram. Thank you so much for doing this with me. This is really oh, cool. Welcome. Thank you. It's really great. You know, like you email me and you know, it's just like you have a disconnect when you're just emailing people and don't see them. Yeah. It was one of the reasons I wanted to do these interviews like this because it's so much more, I think you get to know people a little bit better. 